Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Luca stream. If it's your first time here, a double welcome to you. And also, I love you. Um, hello, hello, hi. We're gonna continue near today. I'm very excited to do that. Um, sorry for missing yesterday. I was just very tired and didn't really feel like streaming. I didn't have the energy to stream. Um, but I do today. I do today. I have had good sleeps. I had an, I just woke up from a nap, actually, like half an hour ago. I'm awake, so let's play. Let's play video game. I'm just going to go straight into it. I have to grab my, I have to grab my control E. Hello, Zarboil. How is it going? How is the Zarboil today? Are you ready for good, for good near times? I'm ready for good near times. I'm good. I'm good. Taking a day off every now and then is, is good for me. I get I get to chill and relax. You're getting your shot today. I have to wait until Tuesday to book my appointment because I couldn't get in contact with Alberta Health Services yesterday. Um so that's fun. I don't I don't have my um Alberta Health Service card, apparently. And I need to find it. Oh my god, did my wheat die? Oh no! My wheat died. So I did um some side quests off stream. Um I did a lot of them. There's a bunch and I did them. I've done like half of the fishing side quests. Um, I've done a little bit of one where we can get, uh, Popola drunk, and I think I can turn that one in if we go talk to Popola, and that one might be fun, because we apparently get to hear Devola and Popola sing together, and that'd be nice, and I have a tulip. Yay! Okay, let's go talk to Popola really quick. Oh yeah, I also bought uh, I think it's called Beastbane. Um, it's a cool, it's a cool good sword. It's very heavy though, but it does great damage. So we're gonna we're gonna use it for a while. It also increases our magic power by like forty percent, as opposed to the ten percent that we were getting from our previous weapon, which is pretty neat. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I just, uh, on, like, Thursday after the stream, I just kind of vibed and did, like, did some side quests and stuff. There were some pretty, there were some half-decent ones. Are you, though, Zarboil? Are you almost done in the game? Are you? Are you, are you in the, in the post-ending D? Because I learned that to get ending E, you have to play through the game after ending D. And that's fucked up. Okay. Oh... Oh. Yo. This side quest is worth the effort. This side quest is very much worth the effort. <laughs> I like that there's almost there's like a different vibe to this. It's almost kind of jazzy. Hey Raven. Oh, this is so good. I don't know where the piano is coming from considering she just has a loot. But whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Alright. That's really good. 
Yeah. That side quest is 100% worth it. Cool. Alright, do we have any side quests left? Uh, There's that. Then I have to get a watermelon somehow for Yona. I think we have to grow that, but I don't know where to get the seeds for it. So, I think there's one more at Seafront, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're actually going to go do plot stuff real quick. So, we are going to go to Facade, which is a, uh, a desert village. And one of the most interesting locations in this fucking universe, Facade is really fucking cool. And I'm very excited. I think Facade is my favorite location in the game. I mean, it's it's a desert, so it's not like, you know, not breaking new ground, but there's there's some stuff with Facade that's like super interesting. Copper ore. Does Rongle hate that? No, I think Rongle doesn't mind it. Hey, where's... Oh, there you are. By the way, Kainé doesn't join us uh, when we go to villages and stuff. Um, So when we go to Seafront or our village, she just hangs out outside. For reasons that we will get to. That is something the game told us the while I, I was off stream. That is important uh, for later. Hmm. <laughs> Vice, don't be mean. Be nice. Yeah, what is this? A sand fountain? So it's, it's not like they need more sand, right? Hmm. These wolves? Yup! Hey, wolves! Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for stuff later. This game has, uh... A plot with, like, the best dogs. The, the best dog. There he is. That's the best dog. That's the best one. That is the best dog ever. Wolf Fang. Wow, their bodies decompose really quickly. Hey, it's that dog. I love that dog. The dog's great. Aren't there supposed to be scorpions? I thought there were scorpion enemies in the desert. Did they remove them? Huh. That's weird. I remember scorpion enemies. Hmm. Whoa! It's that... It's that bimbo. Hi! <laughs> God, her voice is so good. God, I love her so much. She's so good.
I can't remember. I don't think Kaine hangs out with us here either. Hmm. Why? I don't... Sure. Sure, Kaine. All right. <laughs> Kaine saying... Figure out the rest for yourself is so good. It's so choice. Because Rongo has no idea what he's getting himself into here. Facade's cool. I like Facade a lot. With strength and dexterity. Thanks, Vice. That's so helpful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kainate doesn't backseat. Hello. I think they literally speak Japanese. Hold on. Hold on. Do they literally speak Japanese? It seems like it. Though they might... It's entirely possible that... It's entirely possible that they're speaking chaos language, but it definitely it definitely sounds like Japanese. I wonder what they speak in the Japanese version of this game then. Would they speak English? That would be crazy. I don't think there's a way to get over there. Yeah, they're definitely speaking Japanese. Oh, no, there's definitely a way. It's just a little bit roundabout. Can I jump over that? Yeah. Facade's theme is so good, too. Why is all the music in this game so fucking dope? Hi! I'm here. Hmm. All right. Sure. Okay. Welp. Hey, Kaine. Oh, there's the kiddo. Hi. Oh, no. Yeah, Zora, well, I would, I, I would not be surprised if you actually speak this language. That would be the least surprising thing ever. Hi. Oh. So she's mute. How do you figure that out?
does does Vice speak ASL? Yeah. That's very convenient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you probably should. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. Take me on the guided tour. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. This is an item shop. All shops and houses in the city must abide by the following rule. Rule 106, do not live on level ground. We have many rules. Yes, that is the rule. <laughs> They're going to get very sick of this very fast. What does it mean they're not meant they're not meant to live on level ground? Like do they mean ground level? I wish there was an easy way to follow her. This is a sand skiff dock. Rule... 100,015... Wait. 115,017. You must live... You must view the town by ship before purchasing any items. I don't know. It's a rule that was in place when I first came here. Not a new one. Yes, I heard we passed rule 124 and 46 earlier this month. Hmm. Bungle, have a sit. You must view the town from a sand skip before purchasing items. Is this encouraging tourism, maybe? I think that would make sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello. This is a grocery. Rule 11,034. You must live at a level appropriate to your position. Yes. I agree, Vice. Yes. Absolutely. No. We do not skip the tour. That's rude. Do you want to be rude, Vice? Actually, I guess Vice doesn't care about being rude. He won't, he won't give a shit. No skipping. None at all. Not allowed. Look at those wolf pelts. That is a rule, yeah. I imagine. It, and if it's not a rule, it should be. You're not allowed to skip Fira's tour. Rule number... Uh, 234,013. Oh, hello. You look like you would sell materials. 
This is a strange things store. Yes, a store that sells strange things. I don't know. The things are so strange. No one is sure what they do. I see surfboards and signs. Is there a, is that a cannon? Or is that just a big pipe? Hello, Val. It looks like it might... No, I think that's just a big pipe. Yeah, that's just a big pipe. Um, I would just go. Okay, we're just going in a circle. I feel like we skipped some stuff, Fira, but whatever. I like this guy's mask. It's like literally a plate with eyes on it. It's quite good. Where are we going? God it is so sucks that the sand skips are only able to go one way. Wait, are we just going in a circle? We were just here. Were we not? Oh, no, we weren't. We passed by here, though. This is a store that sells raw materials. We use these materials to make masks. Rule 12, do not neglect your mask. If you want to live here, you must have a mask on at all times. That makes sense. Everybody's wearing a mask. Okay, so raw material store. Um, okay. I like Rongle Sit. Rongle Sit is good. It do remind me of True Lip. Though he's kind of sitting like more of a cool anime boy than than Chulip Rongle do. I miss Chulip. I want to replay Chulip on stream sometime. Not anytime soon, because it's been so recently since we played it, but... Maybe next year. That game's so good. This is a weapon shop. This concludes your tour of the city. Thank you for your patience. I will now guide you to the King's Manor. Thank you. Don't insult their culture, Vice. It's not so bad. Although I used to ask the same question, and then someone told me, Rules do not exist to bind you. They exist so you may know your freedoms. When I look at it like that, they don't bother me. I literally had no time to move out of the way, Vice. I can't buy things yet. The mass people remind me of the Sabrosians from the Oracle games. Yeah, they do. They might... I feel like that would be kind of an esoteric reference for this game to make, but they could be a reference. This game does reference Zelda a lot. Is that a... Is that, wait, is, oh, that's actually like a weapon. That's a cool weapon, dude. I like it. I can't wait until I get weapons that aren't just swords. I'm very excited for that. Hey, this guy wasn't here before. I don't think. I don't remember them being there. This is the king's manor. However, we have no king now. Uh oh. Our king was stricken with a foul black illness and so passed away. His son, the prince, now rules this land. Oh. 
This is the prince's royal advisor. He would know far more about these things than I. Oh, cool. Great. Great. Vice learned Japanese suddenly. Why not? We are on urgent business, sir. All right. I like how we come here for a specific purpose and then we we get there and it's like, "Oh, well, I guess we'll come back later after the whole tour, after fighting a bunch of wolves." It's very good. Yoko Taro is a writer that does not respect the player's time, but in a good way. But in a very, very good way. The tour was nice. I like the tour. I don't want to get too far ahead of her. It's a shame that there's no walk speed between this and, like, literally running. Something in the middle would be quite good. Like, I would say, probably around the speed of Fira's little girl trot, that would be good. That would be ideal. Oh my gosh! I mean, Kaine literally said she saved somebody. Yeah! Kaine's a good girl, Vice! Kinda. Sorta. Not really. Mm. What? Okay. Okay. Ah, that's a real catch-22, ain't it? <laughs> okay. You know what? That's fair, Vice. I'm gonna save the prince! What? Oh, screw the rules. Hell yeah, Fira. You kick ass. Huh? Fuck the Prime Directive. Hell yeah. I love... I so love... These characters' banter and rapport. It's very fun. They have such... They have such a fun dynamic.
And I'm excited for us to eventually get the fourth party member. Because the fourth party member just makes it all that much better. Let me show you the way. You'll need my guidance to get through the sandstorm. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> Yoko Taro knew exactly what he was doing with this, didn't he? Oh my god, he totally did. He understood exactly what he was doing. That's why there's no, like, real variable speed. You just gotta deal with it. What a bastard. What an asshole. She's not leaving footprints at all. That's odd. Oh my god, he knew exactly what he was doing. It is wild how much this desert looks like the desert from Automata. It's almost as if... They're the same place or something. Wouldn't that be strange? Oh, look, an item. I don't think there's any actual confirmation about... Well, no. No, yeah, there definitely is. They do wear... Similar masks... In Automata, don't they? I will guide you through the desert. Please stay close to me. Okay. I'll try, Fira. You have a little baby girl trot, so it's kind of hard to follow you perfectly. How am I doing today? Wow, Val. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing okay. Somewhat sleepy. I just woke up from a nap, like, a little bit ago. But, otherwise good. I woke up at, like, six or something today. Which is, uh, wild. Wait. Vice, you have a map. Thank you, Rungal. Probably, yeah. I imagine their masks have some shit. Uh-oh. Get wrecked! Did I get a tutorial for fighting wolves? Okay, Fira, you're good. So this is like... This is some Zelda shit, too. This is literally like Majora's Mask. Where the fish guides you through, um... The, uh... The ocean. To get to where the other fishies are. Probably actual direct inspiration for this. Except you have no way to solve it yourself. You would need Pira, Fira with you to like figure out where the hell you're going. Because there's no like signpost or anything. Like there is in Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask was good. In fact, it is the best Zelda game. I remember this does go on a bit too long. Did they shorten it? No. They did not. Come on. Ow. Okay, I can't get too far away from her, though. Did we do it? Yep. Uh-oh. Hey, Fira? 
Didn't even bother with Hyrule Warriors 2. Uh, I don't have a Switch, so I couldn't have bothered. And I haven't owned a Wii U ever, so I couldn't have bothered with the first one. Also, I'm not really that big a fan of Warrior games unless they're the Gundam ones. The Gundam ones are good. That is the only, and that is in fact the only Gundam I have ever consumed. Are we? Oh yeah, I forgot that it came out on the 3DS. It probably barely fucking functioned on the 3DS, right? Or was it just a completely different game from, like, the Wii U version? The Baron Temple is just ahead. Oh, and one more thing. Oh, thank you. This is as far as I can go. Thanks for your help, Fira. You're a good girl. I like you. Hmm. Wasn't Tetra in the 3DS version? Oh, I like Tetra. It's a shame they whitewashed Tetra in Wind Waker. It's very, it's such a sadness. Doors sealed by a mysterious force. Okay. That one's not, though. Oh, I remember this dungeon. This dungeon rules, actually. Uh, pardon the phrasing. That wasn't meant to be a pun. The following actions are prohibited in this room. Leaping Rabbit. So basically, I'm not allowed to jump in this room. Lest I get uh, sent back to the start. I, I didn't realize I could break these. I never actually broke these in the original game. But you are prohibited from jumping, so you actually have to do the box sliding puzzle. Whoa! Oh! I forgot that you get sent back to the start if you got touched. I forgot about that. That's really annoying, actually. Okay. All right. Kaine, what are you doing? <laughs> you silly. Standing directly in front of the box that is going to shoot you with bullet. Kaine. Hello? She's tanking it. She's fine. It's okay. It's alright. It's all fine. There we go. There's an item there. Fuck you, rules! Oh, Master of the Trial, it is time to devote yourself to the next rule. So I guess this teaches you... This originally might have been like a thing that teaches people the rules of facade, which I think is cool. Or 
Or maybe it's meant to teach nobility the rules. Ah. Oh. Hello. Hi. You're not wearing shoes. Feet on stream. Look at this little shit. Uh? Uh oh. It's a cube. I would, I would, I would do some scanty knee socks shit, but I can't roll my R's. Rurus. Scanty and knee socks are so fucking hot. It's unfair how hot scanty and knee socks are. Crazy that scanty and knee socks are hotter than the protagonists of the anime. Vice is voiced by Liam O'Brien, yeah. And Kaine is voiced by Laura Bailey. Is that right? That's right. I'm right. Hmm. What's the puzzle with this one? Oh. Racing Wolf. Evasive Mouse. Magic Spewing Bat. Racing Wolf. Look at her butt! Kinda, you probably shouldn't do that. That's what happened! <laughs> yeah, seems like it. <laughs> oh, right. I have to walk. Which means... Which means... Can I do any... I, you can do no fast movement. You also can't use magic. Can I break them? That's allowed. Okay. Hey, safe spot. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, wait, no, it does stop. It just takes it a bit. As annoying as this dungeon is, I like it a lot. I think it's really good. It's such a cool concept. Bam! We do it. Um, we'll go here. Sh 
So what am I not allowed to do here? Protected turtle, magic spewing bat. Oh, so I can just go? Yep. I imagine some of this stuff is harder when you don't know how to do good platforming in this game. <laughs> it's weird that he kind of has an air dash, but also doesn't. Maybe that's there as like a joke. Like, 2B has that, and it kind of makes sense because she's an android. But it would make no sense for Rongle to have an air dash. Yeah, it's like he just stops midair. It just stops your momentum. The following action is prohibited in this room. Oh, I can't. Uh, are they targeting me? Oh, no, they're just spinning. Whoop. Hup. Hup. Whoop! Okay. I didn't see that coming. Ah! Whoa! Whoo! That was close. And then they all pop. Huh. Am I allowed to jump in this room? This game has great music. Blade, I'm not allowed. Oh, I'm not allowed to use sword. I also wonder. I don't know if we ever learned that. Up no. Come on, Vice. You can do it. Fuck. No, you can't. Is there any more? Yep. Several, in fact. Wait, are they coming back? Nope. They're not. I mean, there is there is straight up a reason that, like, certain parts of this soundtrack do make me fucking cry. Like, the soundtrack is good on its own, but the soundtrack is better with context. Um, like, context for, like, you know, like, you know, the memories you have of the locations where certain tracks play and what happens when certain tracks play. Though I feel like that is probably that can go for pretty much any game, right? Having context makes the soundtrack better. This room is empty. Is there a game here? I'm not allowed to dodge. Oh, that'll be tricky. So I love dodging when I'm fighting enemies. It makes me go fast. I know I've said this a lot over, the, you know, just this last week, but I think Nier truly does have one of the best soundtracks ever. But I've said that about a lot of games lately, right? I just like music. It's gonna be rough for me to eventually do a tier list of like all the video game soundtracks that I like.
out. Get fucked. Uh-oh. That's a new enemy! Oh, it's not a... It's not an issue. I got it. It's fine. Don't worry. Uh, are there any... Nope. Hmm. Hmm? So this is where I came from. Who is this cat girl? It's me. Oh my god, my fucking camera froze. Hold on. Also, hello, Charles. How was Charles doing? Here we go. I'm back. I'm alive. I'm schmoovin' again. God, this game looks so nice. It looks so good. What do you mean? You know people can take their glasses off, right, Charles? Yeah, I know. Do you think people sleep in their glasses, Charles? I mean, I do sometimes, but not intentionally. I shouldn't do that. Because that is a surefire way to wreck your fucking glasses. <laughs> this doesn't look like a boss fight at all. Yes. Hey, look, it's Cube. What's up, Cube? Oh, you got a friend. Do you, do you have my friend? Where's my friend? You stole my friend, Cube. I was very drunk after going to a baby shower. Oh. Drunk is good. Drunk is fun. Ooh. Look how good this boss looks now. Look at this Cube. Look at this cube boss. Whoa. Ah. Oh, those are balls that I can't destroy. Are the blue ones ones that I can't... Can I not blow them up? Cube boss. Right, yeah. Purple, you can't, you can't break purple bullets. No shit. I'm shocked, Vice. You're telling me there's magic up in this bitch? Stunned. Completely stunned. No, it's not an evil Lucas stream today. Today is a normal Lucas stream. I can't get drunk today. That's not allowed. Evil Lucas not here. What? Who is Grimoire's voice? He sounds like... Uh, he, it's Liam O'Brien. Val, I don't think Charles knows who Illidan is. Whoa! It do a big... Ow! Fuck! Ah! Yeah, no, Charles, that's fair. I wouldn't- I wouldn't expect you to. You haven't even played Automata. Like... Actually, wait, have you played Automata? I don't remember. 
I'm pretty sure you haven't. Hey, Kaine! How does one summon e evil Luca? Uh, I don't know. It just happens sometimes. God, she's so pretty. <sighs> as much as, like, this game kind of woobifies and makes the designs, like, you know, stereotypical pretty anime, I'm glad that the faces don't look like shit anymore. The only character in Nier that actually looked good was Brother Nier. And we didn't get that at all. Like, Papa Nier, Papa Nier's face is fucked up, bro. It looked bad. He looked like a Gollum. Or like a Kevin Bacon. No, not Kevin Bacon. Uh... Uh, fuck, what's the, uh, mm, what's the creepy guy, Gary Busey? Thank you, Val. I was literally about to say the creepy guy that lives in people's walls. He was in a, Gary Busey was in a movie where he was, a. Uh, it was like a horror movie where he uh, lived in somebody's walls. Ow! Granted, I don't know. I feel like the the art style of original Nier made it unique. You know? Whereas, you know... Now, Near Replicant just looks very similar to Automata. And I, and I guess in that way, it kind of gives it, like, a sort of unifying artistic vision. But, I don't know. Okay. Cool. We do it. Hello, little child. What What is up? How are you doing? You got a thing. Good reference. I like that one. That's a good one. That's a fun one. I enjoy that. That's great. That's good. <laughs> I understand that reference. Yeah, I've I've also seen uh stories and also videos of that sort of thing. And, uh, it sucks and scares me. <laughs> hmm. I will say, kiddo, you didn't actually earn this. We did all the work. Well, I think, okay. Okay. Nice. 
Yep, yep, yeah, that's the one. That's the one that I always think about, Val. That is the one that I always think about. That one scares the fuck out of me. That's a good rule. That video- that video fucks me up. I think it might not be real, though. I think the, um... The person who did the video is, like... A film guy? Um, so it might not be real. But, it, but like, it's presented as being a side, like, like, you know, set aside from his film stuff. Which is the part that is, that concerns me. Rebirth. That sure is a weapon, huh? Yeah, if they did, I imagine his father wouldn't have died. Did I not get a sealed verse for killing the cubes? I will go on any number of Zelda quests to save my sister. All right. Huh? Sure, dude. Sounds good. Oh, yeah, we did get... Oh, yeah, we did get one. Okay, so... Something I find... <coughs> um... Interesting about this... Is that... The Baron Temple is supposed to be... It's supposed to be, like, a series of trials... To determine if somebody is, like, worthy... And or ready to become the King of Facade, right? And... In bungling it up and having us do the whole thing, but still getting the mask. Um, the prince here is technically now the king without the ability, the maturity, or the worth. Um, and we will see how that plays out eventually. Yeah, Liam O'Brien is one of those voice actors that's in literally, literally everything. Literally everything. Isn't he Kanji in Persona 4? Or oh, is that Matt Mercer? Both? I think both, actually. I think Liam O'Brien was the original Kanji, then Matt Mercer was the new Kanji? Was that right? He was in P3. Was he Akihiko? Kanji was Troy Baker, the other voice actor that's in everything. That makes sense. Earthworm's Claw. So, hey, fun fact. To get endings C and B, you have to have every 
single weapon in the game. Um, so that's fun. What does Earthworm's Claw look like? It looked like a fucking sickle, yo. That looks pretty cool, actually. We're gonna keep using Beastbane, though. I think Beastbane is our best weapon. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, a lot of these voice actors don't actually have all that much vocal range, you know? Um, it's just they have good voices that people like. And that's that's why they get roles. It's like Yuri Lowenthal. Yuri Lowenthal is in a shitload of stuff. But Yuri Lowenthal always sounds like Yuri Lowenthal. No, Matt Mercer voiced Kanji in the P4 anime and also in P4G. Because they had to get new voice actors for for that. That's when Aaron Fitzgerald became uh, Chie. I can't even remember who Chie was before Aaron Fitzgerald. Yuri did do such a fucking good job in Spider-Man. Oh my god, Yuri Lowenthal is such a perfect Peter Parker and a perfect Spider-Man. He does both so well, and that's... That's a talent. Because Peter Parker and Spider-Man are two very different characters. Um, and it's hard to get both of them right. But he does. He does both. That's always been the issue with the Spider-Man movies. Um, like, Tobey Maguire is a good Peter Parker. He's a very good, believable Peter Parker. But he's not a very good Spider-Man. Um, because you don't really believe the sarcastic quips um, from a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. But, um, Andrew Garfield... Was a very good Spider-Man. You the the quips and the and the jokes from Andrew Garfield Spider-Man were very good. He was not a very good Peter Parker because he looks like a fucking jock. What is this? Oh, it's a graveyard. That's weird. What's up with this? Huh. Yeah, I mean, that, Charles, that's the thing with a lot of these voice actors. Like, they, they've been in the industry for so long doing so much stuff um, that, like, they were probably in a lot of the stuff that you liked as a kid, but, but like, you know, before you paid attention to stuff like voice actors. Um, so it's it's really interesting going back and looking at, like, you know, the careers of people like Troy Baker and Matt Mercer and Liam O'Brien and Laura Bailey. Tara Strong as well. Tara Strong has done, like, a lot of really famous characters that, uh... You might not realize that she voiced. Though Tara Strong is like mostly related to cartoons, not necessarily video games. Oh yeah. Yeah, Baldur's Gate has a lot of them. That's the shame of it, though. It's like, now these voice actors are so big that they take all the roles from, like, smaller voice actors in bigger games. But... No, you know what? Actually, no. I was gonna say it was a shame, but, like, 
Because these people started off on smaller games like Baldur's Gate, right? Baldur's Gate was not like a huge game when it came out. Um, and now these these voice actors don't do like smaller games. Obviously not. They 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 have the privilege of being able to like pick and choose their roles. And I was gonna say that was a shame. No, I think that's good. Because then smaller voice actors can cut their teeth on indie games and maybe you know break into the in break into the industry. I mean, that's what Kira Buckland did, right? And then she became 2B. 2B, and she's uh, a character in JoJo. I can't remember what the character's name in JoJo is. JoJo Part 4, The Girl in the Alley. What the fuck is that character's name? I always forget it. I like her a lot, and I always forget her name. I mean, Kira Buckland also did stuff with, like, several YouTubers that I like a lot. Like, uh, I think she was friends with the uh, Super Best Friends while they were still doing content. She's cool. I like her a lot. What's the next thing we're doing? I think we're going to the mansion next, right? Yeah, totally. Oh, wait. No, we're not going to the mansion yet. I don't think. Raimi! Yes, that's it. Raimi. That's her name. Yeah, we're not going to the mansion yet. Um, hey, let's take a little break before we do this. Because this stuff is really fun. I'm back. Let's carry on. I hear a voice. I squint and see a boy standing before me. His hair is silver, his skin is pale, and he stares up at me with hard, glassy eyes. Soon his lips begin to move, but no sound comes out. What is he saying? I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't. I can't. I can't. I try to leave, but something about the boy holds my gaze. I watch his face, expressionless, as his lips slowly flutter. What is he trying to say? Wait, it's a phrase. I can almost make it out. It starts with an S, then there's an E. I can almost see it now. The letters begin to fall together, one after the other, faster and faster. Sealed verse. It's a sealed verse! The thing I am looking for, the key to saving my sister. I stare at the boy with renewed ferocity, trying desperately to make out his next word. Dream. Dream? What? What the hell does that mean? The lips move again faster now. I can't follow them. Damn it, I can't make it out! I want to scream. I want to tear the walls down around me. But instead, I force myself to be calm. I can do this. I can do it for Yona. Slowly, ever so slowly, I parse out the letters that make up his final words. Forest of Myth. So, this next bit of the game is probably one of the best. No, I'm fine. Just tired. I've been doing a lot of shit lately, Yona, okay? Give me a fucking break. Hmm, weird. <laughs> I love Yona.
Oh! We had the same dream, huh? That's weird. How odd. How strange. I have a pumpkin. I think I have two pumpkins. Why does she want all these gourds? Is she gonna make a recipe? Oh no. With melon, watermelon, and pumpkin. Good job, Yona. She do it. She make a cake. Yona's so good. Yona's so fucking good. I love her so much. She's the best. Best girl. <laughs> Poor Rongle. Poor Rongle. He have to eat bad food. I feel like these quests should make you weaker. You should de-level doing these quests. Yeah, let's do that. Yona's a collector of round food. Oh, she has she has good taste. I like I also like round food. It's very easy to eat. Hmm. Did you now? Dearest Popola, I hope this letter finds you well. I am writing in hopes of bringing to your attention a certain dream issue of concern regarding recent events in Dream the Village. I was hoping it might be Dream able to get your advice dream on the matter. Recently, there have been dream reports, dream, dream, of a certain dream, 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 of dream, 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 dream evil, dream, 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 empty, dream, curse, dream, 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 dream evil, dream, 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 and so on. I agree. I think that letter is based on the Twitter trending. Whenever that Minecraft guy does something. So whenever he so much as sneezes. Let's go! Is that letter about dreams? I don't know. I didn't quite. I didn't quite catch what that letter was about. It's hard to tell. Very strange. All right. So now we go to, I think, one of my favorite parts of this game. Though I think every part of this game is my favorite part of this game. So that's not really saying much. Oh, look, there's shades right by the gate. You guys need to get out of here. Uh, oh. You can't be here.
Okay, so we've been... We've been here before. I'm gonna save. Because that's a good idea. Um, hey, look, there's a man here. Hello, sir. Hold on, I'm gonna... I'm gonna rummage around your village really quick, okay? Yep. And... Yep. That pig go! Boars are fast, yo. They fucking schmoove. Uh huh. All right, cool, dude. Oh, it's like Metal Gear Solid Five. I understand. Oh, okay, Zarboyle. Vice's voice rose in a quizzical way. The villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his eyes. The mayor stared at Rongel and Vice. The mayor explained, In the past weeks, a mysterious disease called the Death Dream had spread across the forest of myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. The village mayor had determined the Death Dream was spread from person to person by spoken words. But before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. Vice stared at the mayor, his mouth twitching slightly. Before the mayor could confirm Rongel's suspicion, Vice exploded with rage. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the subject to who Rongel had seen, and what they had discussed since coming to the village. Rongel and Vice racked their brains, but could find no easy solutions. There were simply too many words to consider, too much random chatter, too many meaningless conversations. The mere suggestion that Vice chose his words carelessly seemed to sting his pride. <clears throat> Irritated, Vice looked skyward as if searching for answers in the heavens. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to Rongel like a contagion. Wait, said Rongel suddenly. Did someone just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, that vid the villager told us to watch out for contagious words, right? The mayor leaned forward with renewed interest, pushing a startled vice aside in the, pro in the process. He must have said something, right? Asked the mayor. Some specific combination of words? What was it? It was about dreaming, or something that dreams, or... Oh, what the hell was it? A sheep? cried Vice suddenly, blurting out the first thing that popped into his head. The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. After a few more minutes of thought, Rongel's face suddenly lit up. I remember, he said, those who dream. That's what he said. I'm sure of it. At this, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of papers from his pocket. He flipped through them in a, a few times before finally nodding his head, uh, nodding his approval at Rongel. That sounds right, he says, as a stray sheet of paper flooded to the ground. My notes also mentioned something like that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head, his worn pencil stub tracing lines across a lone piece of paper. For the last month, I've done nothing but study the disease we call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect people from whatever comes along. But I never, ex but I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused, a grimace crossing his face. 
I should probably be taking notes or something. <coughs> oh. Vice immediately fired back. I applaud the force of will it takes to research a disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should bend your efforts to escaping this place instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping the tip. I've tried to escape. From the very first moment I was locked inside my own dreams, I've been looking for a way out, but I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there was an exit, I'd know about it. He paused for a moment, his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once this disease took hold, things changed. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked all the color out of our lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free. And I won't stop trying until it happens. Rongold nodded in agreement. Huh? Wait a second. I didn't nod. Look, if we can be of any help, said Rongold, just ask. Now hold on. I did not just say that. Silence, cried Vice. The Grimoire looked from Rongold to the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. Grimoire Vice's face is always confident, thank you very much. Now see here, mayor. You told us that nothing can exist in this dream without your knowing of it. But yet you seem surprised to see us when we first arrived, yes? The mayor slowly raised his head, realization dawning on his face. Oh my god, he said. You're right. You're right. I had no idea you were coming. The human imagination is a limitless engine, said Vice, and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, we shall search it out. Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. The mayor suddenly felt as if he could breathe again. He'd almost forgotten what it was like. Good luck, you two, he called to the departing forms of Rongold and Vice. We are all counting on you. As Rongo slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. I saw this man before, he thought. But where? So in case it wasn't obvious, um, because Nier likes to play with genres a little bit, we're doing a text adventure now. It's very good, and I like it a lot. So we're doing story time with Luca for a bit. Which means I have to keep I have to keep drinking coffee so I have uh a strong throat. That is that was bad phrasing. Rungle's mood darkened as he trudged through the forest. Hours earlier, when the beauty of the place was still a new thing, he'd been confident they could get they could get in, find the exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed in around them. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss covered rocks seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once, he'd been forced to steady himself on the rough bark of a tree, and his hands now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Vice was proving to be a spectacularly poor traveling companion. Unhindered by either terrain or physical effort, he spent most of his time urging Ronald to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Vice muttered something about legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, Ronald snapped. Okay, Vice, cram it for a second, would you? You don't have to walk. Rongo leaned against the tree and tried to stretch the knots from his back. How can this stupid forest be so big? He muttered to himself. The moment the words tumbled from his mouth, a cacophony of insects sprang to life. Every imaginable form of buzz, click, and hiss roared out at a volume that rattled his teeth. Rongo slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard. Vice, what's going on? Rungle could see Vice's mouth moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects screamed. The, the, the forest ha howled. And then, just as Rungle's ears seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed his hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Bug sounds. Bug sounds are happening. As the insect cacophony dimmed another, another decibel, Rongle began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's not just white noise. It's something else. The insects weren't just calling out. They were asking a question. One with it is lacking. Two with it is ideal. Three with it is dangerous. What is it? By my pages, is this a riddle? 
I guess so? I mean, it feels sort of forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place. Then I leave it to you to answer. One with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous. What is it? A secret. Inwardly furious that Vice left the task to him, Rongo sighed and gave the only answer that made sense. It's a secret. Er, right? The sound of the insect stopped as suddenly as it began. The forest undergrowth parted before Rongo like a rippling wave, opening a new path. These forest arthropods are making room for, are making a road for us, said Vice with glee. Pleased at passing the test, Rongo moved on with new intensity. The path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind. As long as they were on a path, their journey had a purpose. I guess the forest has accepted us, huh? said Rongo after a bit. Vice spun around to face his companion. Do not mistake the will of this forest for some happy pet you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where this path leads. As Vice finished speaking, the pair turned a corner and found themselves facing a clear forest spring. Smiling, Rongo picked up a small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Good heavens, said Vice. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. When the, note, when the rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of the spring, the ripples it left behind came together to form words. I enter through the window, but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Absurdly easy, barked Vice. Now answer it. Rongle grit his teeth and tried not to reach out and strangle his companion. He's right, after all. This one is pretty easy. I enter through, I enter through the window, but break no glass. When night falls, I vanish. What am I? Sunlight. Sunlight. A plume of water suddenly bursts from the spring. Sunlight filtered through the seat, through the trees and reflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, said Vice softly, I have never seen such a sight. Perhaps I have misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey, look, cried Longle, awaking Vice from his daze. There's a house or something over there. Glancing in the direction of his friend's extended hand, Vice saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. That's weird, isn't it, Vice? I mean... Who will build a house all the way out here? Rongle walked over and pounded on the door. After a moment of solid banging, the door cracked open and a small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large black cape, while his face was obscured by mist. What kind of game is this? What happening? It's, uh, it's a text adventure. Don't worry about it. Um, began Rongle, but before he could get any further, the cloaked man held a hand up and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon. But end the night with three. What am I? Rongo tried to ask the cloaked man who he was and what he was doing there, but he simply repeated the question. If we, wage, if we wish to engage this man in conversation, said Vice, it seems we must answer his riddle. Yeah, I suppose, said Rongo. Well, at least it's an easy one. Uh, man. A man. A man. The mist dissolved from, a cloaked from the cloaked figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. Y you're the mayor, cried Rongle. The small man slowly shook his head. I am not the mayor you know. Now listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a version of you that was not yourself. Uh, sorry? What's that mean? It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the person at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned on his heel and slammed the door behind him. As Rongle watched, mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from existence. When Rongle and Vice returned to the forest entrance, they found the mayor leaning against the tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over to them. Good gravy, he cried. You made it. You actually made it back. His left hand grasped Rongle's and pumped it so, furious, so fiercely it threatened to dislodge from the socket, while his right seized Vice by the cover and swung him through the air. Gah, by the heavens, stop shaking me, fool! We have not even told you if we were successful or not. The mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy you're alive. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Rongle withdrew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the Death Dream's seal, he said. At least, I think we did. The mayor's face beamed as Rongle filled him in on the details. 
When the tale was done, the three of them laid down on the forest ground and fell asleep. Rongle cocked his head. Okay, hang on a second. This is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? Cease your endless prattle and go to sleep, fool. Fighting against the rules of this place is futility itself. Rongle and the mare obediently reclined atop the grassy earth. Have you forgotten, continued Vice, that it is words that control the death dream, words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. With that, the trio found their eyes growing heavy, their breath slowing. This is the first time, began the mare. This is the first time I have felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were cut off by a loud, long yawn, and he remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they awoke, things had a slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt thicker, the leaves greener. It was clear that they had, that they had, that they had awakened from their dream. Vongel shook the mare's shoulder gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh, wow, said the mare in an awed voice. We did it. I'm back. He blinked once and then again, as if not quite believing the sight before him. You two have no idea how much this means. The death dream was spreading through our village and I wanted to... Well, I thought I could figure out a way how... Figure out how to stop it. But I guess that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and become trapped in my own dream. The mayor started to stand, then collapsed back to the earth. He stared at his legs as if, as if trying to remember how they worked, then glanced at Rongel and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mare to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said the mare as a wry smile crossed his lips. You shall relearn in short order, I am sure, said Vice. For now, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mare, swaying on unsteady feet. On unsteady feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in the death dream. I have to save them. The mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village, then bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he exclaimed when the prayer was finished. It's the guardian of our village's history and memories. Superstition will only make our mission harder, muttered Vice. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head. Not in the gods, the words. Legend says that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as a sealed verse. Rongle and Vice could not contain their surprise. It seemed a ghoul had been found in the most unexpected of places. I say, muttered Vice, this is certainly a stroke of luck. As the three of them said their goodbyes, Rongle managed to mention the strange man who had given them the third riddle and the mysterious words he had left with them. I once saw a version of you that was not yourself, muttered the mayor. What in the world does that mean? Lost in thought, he stared into space for a long moment. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I'd seen you before, too. Rongo tried to keep a straight face and failed, but the mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway, I figure it's just some kind of illusion created by the death dream. It probably doesn't mean anything. Rongo gave them the mayor a nod and a smile, but inwardly his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words. And what exactly is going on here? That riddle would prove to be the most difficult one of all. I got a sealed verse. Alright, let's save. No, we just dreamed. Accurate. Also accurate. Alright, we should do the rest of them too. There are other villagers and we have to do that for them too. But we should definitely do a save. So there's the chief. There's a villager there. And one there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> All 
I breathe air scented with death and resist the urge to laugh, for I know it will sound like the words of a madman. How long have I been in this fresh hell? My box, my prison, is tucked beneath a stairway in the long, unused catacombs of some infinite castle. Outside, I hear the sounds of a funeral dirge that plays without end. Light has no place here. Wind is a forgotten friend. I pray for death to come, but he forsakes me. Time passes. An eternity slips by in a single tick of the clock. Someone knocks on my prison. Anyone there? I hear in an unfamiliar voice say. My savior. I claw at the door of my jail, embedding thick splinters under my ragged nails. I scream for help. I laugh. I stop. Surely this is a product of my addled mind. Surely it cannot be true. Help me, I cry. For the love of all the gods, help me. Impossibly, I hear the sound of a lock being torn out and falling to the floor. As the door suddenly creaks open, I have just enough time to see a silver-haired boy and a floating book before the light pours inside. My eyes, accustomed to blackness, explode with pain, and I am forced to turn away. Who are you? I ask, shaking hands, covering my face. How have you come to this place? I am Grimoire Vice. This is Rongel. Long have we been searching for you. Now come, stand. We shall awaken from this nightmare together. The one known as Rongel extends his hand and pulls me from the cell. Though my eyes are slow to adjust to freedom, my ears are keen as ever, and they recognize the staccato sounds of heavy rain. I never thought to hear that again, I whisper. Would that this were not such a terrible storm, said Grimoire Vice. Look at your feet. I force my eyes open and see water pooling around my ankles and lapping at my shins. There's so much of it. Yes, and more comes each moment we delay. If we do not make good our escape, we shall all drown in this castle. We know you are weak, but you are, you are our only hope to survive this place. Time, that long-forgotten friend, made itself known again. I nodded my head and swore to save my rescuers, no matter the cost. The castle catacombs are a maze, twisting upon themselves like the endless entrails of a giant. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed north. And proceed north. At the end of the corridor, I find a row of twenty gorgeous canopied beds resting atop a carpet of, vi of velvet. All are covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Searching for the door to the next room, I come across a shapeless mass of gray matter. It has been shoved against the side of the wall, and despite my fever, I think I see the outlines of a door just beyond. When I reach out a finger and touch a piece of the mass, it turns to dust and drifts away on the wind. Realization slowly dawns, and I fall to my knees and weep. Corpses. I face a mountain of charred and crumbling corpses. I look from it to the beds and back again until the horror dawns full upon me. Someone has piled these bodies into a tower and set them ablaze. Whether they were alive or dead, I do not know. And sanity will not permit me to consider the proposition further. I make a sound, whether scream or laughter, I cannot be certain. Then my mind grants me merciful blackness, and I find myself opening the door and leaving that most terrible of rooms. I squint down the dim I squint down the dim corridors and proceed east. And proceed north. Um so this is real tax adventure shit right here. Choosing a direction to go. Um, that is... It's so fucking good. At the end of the path, the waters rise to my waist, exhausting me, out, exhausting me both physically and spiritually. I pray that this is the way out. Eventually, I stand the sight... I can stand the sight of the waters no longer, and so I turn my eyes upward. Imagine my surprise when I see a series of paintings hanging on the faded plaster wall. Each depicts a person in the prime of life, clad in clothing of the highest quality. The styles, however, are strange to me, leading me to believe that these people had lived long, long ago. One subject wears an outfit that particularly catches my eye. It is constructed of a thin, breezy cloth and decorated with a motif of flowers and birds, while encircling the figure's waist is a leather belt of the most perfect construction. It is a stunning, co uh, it is a stunning costume, even by modern standards. Ugh. As I gaze at the portrait, I am struck by a desire to touch it with my own hands. Yet, as I extend a single finger to the painting, I am gripped by a most unpleasant feeling. Staring closely at the image, I, can, I see it bend and warp into the shape of another finger. Something behind the picture is pointing at me. Is it another prisoner? 
A fellow inmate trapped for eternity in this place? I cannot let it pass, and so I seize the portrait with both hands and throw it into the water. The wall is hollow behind the painting, and, in and inside I can, I can just make out a body. Whether or not this is a prisoner, there would be no rescue. The poor soul is long dead. Scraps of clothing lie on the floor around the bones. Only a small amount of the fabric has, has survived. But it features the same delicate designs that were depicted in the portrait. I have been admiring a row of corpses, blocked from view by portraits of each victim at their pinnacle. Enough! Shielding my eyes, I paddle forward through the water. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed south. Uh, south. West. South. North? The water has risen to my chin and now laps greedily at my mouth and nose. You dumb bast- shouts Ron. He surely desires- Rongle? Ron? Who's Ron? I don't know who Ron is. Who's that? But the rest of his insult is cut short by the rising water. Grimoire of ice, wet and tattered, floats on the water's surface. It is already too late for him. This wasn't- This wasn't how it was supposed to end. Oh, did we fuck up? Oh, we fucked up! Oh, shit. Okay. Cool. Great. Do we get to restart that from the start? I forgot that you can actually fuck these up. And, like, die and have to restart. Whoopsie doodle. I biffed it. Okay, we gotta... We're just gonna, like, blast through this. Okay. Proceed north. Uh, proceed east. North. North. Yeah. Okay. Proceed south. Uh, let's go west. At the end of the path, a row of heavy wooden casks lies on their sides in a dark chamber. Doubtless, they are filled with wine. My thirst roars to life. I cannot remember the last time my parched throat had relief. I scramble to the first cask and pull frantically at the cork. The theft of a few cups means nothing, I tell myself. The casks will be ruined by the flood regardless. Ramen? Okay, I'll give you ramen, Charles. I want ramen now. I'm gonna make ramen after the stream. Finally, the cork surrenders to my attack, and thick red liquid bursts forth from the hole. This is no wine. It is blood still warm from the body, whether animal or something else, I cannot say. The foul, wick the foul liquid soon mixes with the li rising floodwaters, creating a warmth that laps against my thighs. By all the gods, are, all are the rest of the these casks filled with blood as well? I lack the courage to confirm my suspicion. Disgust quickly becomes fear as I turn to flee, but my weakened legs betray me sending me toppling over into the red ocean below. The smell of death is everywhere. It threatens to consume me. I must escape this hell. Crawling on all fours like an animal, holding back screams lest any foulness enter my mouth, I lurch forward through the red waters and out of the room to freedom. And proceed east. East. I find myself in a great hall with only the sounds of rain for comfort. The waterlogged red carpet swishes beneath my feet as I approach the center of the room. Once there, I behold a beautiful dining table upon which rests china and silver of the finest construction, as well as the remains of a fantastic feast. As my eyes continue to adjust, I see many chairs surrounding the table, each holding a dinner guest. Noticing movement, I approach the chair at the table's head, but as the truth of the matter dawns on me, I recoil in horror. The host of the feast is a corpse, as are all the invited guests. An army of foul, wriggling insects have made home in their remains, and this is the movement I saw. This one splendid feast was now nothing more than a requiem for the damned. I take a moment to steady my shaking hands, then slowly back away from the table. Desperate to lose sight of the abomination before me, my gaze lands upon the lands on the chairs upon which the dead were seated. This is a mistake, for the chairs proved to be even more terrible than the feast itself. 
Each one is covered in a layer of spikes that run from the seat, up the back, and down the arms. This explains the color of the carpet beneath my feet. I can only pray that the unfortunate diners were dead when the meal began. For if not, it is a simple task to envision the agonized screams that must have sprung forth from their mouths. My mind grasps frantically at the possibility that these sounds have committed these souls had committed some terrible crime for which this was punishment. Though in truth, I suspect they had committed no crime at all. There would be no tomorrow for these unfortunates. For these unfortunates, this was their last supper. Um, north. Fuck. Fuck. Should have gone west. It so. I gotta say. As much as I really love this, um, you know, exploring the text to speed, the, uh, no, not the text adventure genre, and, um, you know, being a really cool genre bending, uh, bit of the game. Really sucks that you can instantly die, but I guess that's the text adventure way, isn't it? They sure do love to just instantly kill you. I've played, I've played, um, I've played Zork. I know how it'd be. Sometimes you just get eaten by a Gru and there's nothing you can do about it. East. Yes. Okay, so then we should go west after this. Proceed west. Swim down the dim corridors and proceed west. This is the blood one. Oh, wait. Is there actually a map? Wait. I think there's actually a map. Like, it seems like... If I go in certain directions... I always hit the same stuff, right? Can I not pick that up? I guess not. Oh, it's a medicinal herb. Of course I can't. Let's try going in one direction. Let's see if we can just go north. Does this give me any hint as to where to go? I don't think so. East, north, north. This is the one with the paintings, right? South. Oh, okay. South. West. South. North? Fuck! This one's tough. I am maybe not the best at navigating text adventure games, which is why I don't really play them. Okay, so... There's definitely, like... This isn't just random. It's not just taking me to specific locations when I go do certain things. There's like an actual map of the location. And when I choose a direction, it's taking me to a different room of the map. So it's like an actual text adventure. Proceed north. So this is the room with the burned corpses. If I go south, I go back to the start. So I go east. West brings me back, so I go north. And if I go east here... That's the room with the feast. Let's go west. What if I go west? The casks, okay. East, north, 
paintings. What? Hold on. Where else could I have gone? Huh. Okay, so if I continue north from there... Okay, so I think the first place we should try to go is the portrait place. Is there a way to, like, quickly navigate this text? No, I just- I literally do just have to mash X. Okay. Proceed north, and then take me to the... Medical room. The hospital room. East, north, north, paintings, that's a dead end. What? I'm confused. I'm... I'm very confused. I feel like we've explored every room of this... castle that we have access to. What if I... Hold on. What if I do this? What if I go north? And then go south. Nope. West. Okay. And there's only one direction to go from here? Yeah. East... Oh, north. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I got it. 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 Wait, 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 Do you have to do this in a certain order? No, okay, let's try that again. So I have to get to the Last Supper. East, North, East. Yeah. So there should be an option to go north from here. Against all hope, we make it to the front door. Bring it down, someone cries, and so I give myself to the effort. In tandem with Rongel and Grimoire of Vice, I slam my body against the thick, sturdy door. On the third try, it gives way, and we find ourselves sprawled on the ground outside the castle. The storm is in retreat, the clouds above are still dark and foreboding, but to the west I can see a thin shimmer of sunlight trying to break through. How can I thank you, I cry as tears of joy in the rain on my cheeks. I would surely have died in there. Looking down, I suddenly notice that my dress is in tatters, and ship is to try to cover my exposed skin. Your dress? Then you are a woman, madam. I am. I proffer the two a smile. I suppose it comes as something of a surprise, seeing as how I exist only in the form of words. I can see that the one known as Rongel is disappointed that the torn dress will be given no further description, but he hides it well. With a nod and a shrug, the three of us set forth to our awakening. But behind us, an awakening of another kind is taking place. Black smoke fills the abandoned castle, providing the countless damned souls inside with their final shroud. After a moment, the castle's windows shatter with a mighty roar. A fresh breeze blows through the hallways and corridors, clearing the smoke away for good. As we watch in awe, uncountable black shadows slowly flicker to life, crossing to and fro in front of the broken windows. The castle's dead have awakened to their new life, as shades.
Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay, that's another one done. Let's go save. I actually don't remember the next one. Hopefully it's not as tricky as the last one. Alright. Yo, what's up? Is there... Okay, so there's one there. And then there's... Something for later. Yes. You would think so. You would think Vice would be super into this, actually. A colony of massive sculptures was visible in the distance, their tall forms scraping against the sky. Vice and Rongle had never seen such a sight, and their eyes widened as they tried to take it in. Wait, we can actually hear them? As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. He said... Oh, there we go. Under this heat, a mirage or two would hardly be an unexpected sight. Rongle nodded and wiped the sweat off his brow, leaving a trail of sand in its place. He thought he'd never been th so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of grasp, grass pushed up through the rocky surface as if defying those who had laid this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Rongle lightheaded. His feet hurting, he crouched down to rest. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is someone playing a joke on us or what? The complaining had already begun. Vice tried not to let his eyes roll too much. A joke, he said. No, no joke. This road leads to the city of art. Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of it in this way might make it easier for you to bear. Rongle glanced at Vice's grinning face, shook his head, and resumed walking. As time passed, Rongle's feet grew more painful and his throat drier than he thought possible. He tried not to look further than the next step ahead because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We are definitely getting closer, said Vice in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this, this much is certain. Encouraged, Rongle lifted his gaze. Suddenly, he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried. It's water. Water, asked Vice. Preposterous. I don't see any water. Over there, just ahead of us. Look, the sun is reflecting off it. Without waiting for a response, Rongle sprang to life and bounded toward the site. What in the... There was no water. There was nothing but sand in every direction. Rongle closed his eyes and sighed as Vice floated up behind him and chuckled softly. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such things. Rongle shook his head, bewildered. Suddenly, he pointed off in the distance, his eyes wide, his eyes wide once more. Wait, there it is! I just missed it! Look, it's right there! Rongle sprinted off again, leaving Vice with no choice but to follow. After a few minutes of running, Rongle came to a halt. I could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hands up to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue, shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. With a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour until an exasperated vice finally floated up to Rongle and struck him in the face with his cover. Enough, you blithering idiot! Stop this at once! There is no water here! Rongle's face clouded. There isn't? There is not, and perhaps next time you'll listen to me when I tell you as much. Vice paused for a moment, paused for a moment, then continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seems we have arrived in the city of art. Rongle looked up. Stretched out before him was a row of impossibly tall sculptures. Their journey was at an end. They're huge, cried Rongle, completely forgetting the heat and pain of the past few hours. I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape, a tall rectangle that stretched upward that stretched up toward the sky. But that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered with panes of glass that reflected light in a thousand directions, while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. 
Some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this? said Rongel. Where are the people? Where are the houses? Perhaps the land is, is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels sat silent on steel silent rails. Beautifully carved works of lights of with lights of red, amber, and green dangled over every street. Oh, the city of art is just a city. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many were composed of materials they had never before encountered. The sheer variety of colors and styles were staggering. Unable to find a theme or a purpose to the abstract works around them, Rongel and Vice eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. Rongel uttered a sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. The three statues were indistinguishable except for a single word chiseled into their, into their right arms. One read Alpha, one read Beta, and the final one read Gamma. As Rongel moved to touch the nearest statue, a bird flew from the top of one of the sculptures. Alighting on the statue's shoulder, it, emit, it emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. With that, the bird departed. As if on cue, the three statues shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that, said Rongel. They're alive. The triplets bowed low before Rongel. Please, said Gam, Alpha, you have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to Rongel and threw his hands in the air. Alpha's a fake, you know. I am the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta is a fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. Their respective pleas given, the three statues returned to their frozen state as silence once again enveloped the city. When you consider all of their statements, only one of them could be the real thing, said Vice. Longo furrowed his eyebrows and considered his answer. Okay. Um... Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. So Gamma says that Beta is fake. And that they are real. Beta says that Alpha is fake. And that they are real. I don't- you know what? Can we get a clue? I don't have a clue. Rungle took a long look at the statues and tried to clear his mind. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. It'll... Give us... We can do it again. You have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Okay. Alpha says they're real. They don't say that anybody else is lying. Stop lying, said Beta. Alpha's a fake, you know. I'm the real one. Beta is a fake. Gamma is real. If Beta is a fake... Oh, wait. If Beta is a fake, then Alpha has to be real. But Gamma can only tell a lie. Hmm. So, I don't think Gamma can be the real one. Which means Beta is real, I think. No! That, no, I, that was literally an input error. I'm so, I'm so mad. I'm so mad.
<sighs> oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. So if Gamma, Gamma says... Okay, so here here's the logic, right? So Gamma says that Beta is fake. And if Beta was fake... Then Alpha would be real, right? Which means that what Gamma said was wrong. So Gamma's a liar. Um, which means... Alpha is also a liar. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got it. It's, yeah, Beta's the real one. The real one is Beta. The Rongo's voice betrayed a notable lack of confidence. He was relieved to see Vice nodding at him. If Alpha were telling the truth, began Vice in, dry, in the dry tones of a lecturer, Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is fake would be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, that theory crumbles. Yeah. Now let us presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with, the two, with two statues telling the truth. Finally, let us assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma's lies would make sense. Therefore, Beta must be real. As Vice finished his explanation, Alpha and Gamma, and Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into dust, while Beta sprang to life once more. Congratulations, villagers, said Vice in a cheerful t voice. It's time to awaken. The time to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped to his knees and bowed his head as low as it could go before an uncomfortable wrongle pulled him to his feet. Why did you have a dream like this? Asked Vice. Have you been to the city before? The villagers slowly looked around at the, at the bizarre objects and sculptures that dotted, dotted the landscape and shook his head. I... I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this. But at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, muttered Rongle, just like the mayor. The vague sense of unease that struck Rongle during the mayor's dream spread once more through his mind. Yeah. I'm actually really proud of myself for figuring that out. Very, very incredibly proud of myself for figuring that puzzle out without any hints, without any tips. I am big brain, very smart. Pro-gayer. Oh, he gives me a weapon, doesn't he? Yep. Cool. So this is mandatory. We did actually have to do that. Faith. Fuck it, yeah. I want to use the cool fucking katana. I can't remember if you have to upgrade, fully upgrade every weapon as well. I can't fucking remember. I know that's a requirement for automata. I can't remember if it's, an, if it's a requirement here. I think just having them all is enough. I think? It was good. <laughs> Shut up, Vice. Bad joke. There are no words. I love Vice making stupid jokes. It totally betrays this, like, very serious character, and it's, like, it's such a good little character trait. It's very fun. 
Okay. Now I think we go to Resident Evil. I bet y'all weren't expecting this to actually be a continuation of our Resident Evil streams, but we're gonna go there. Vice is kind of annoying, but also great. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, he's very much... He, he also he gets less annoying uh, as the game progresses. But he really does, like, grow on you. With his, like, banter with uh, Rongle and Kaine. He's just kind of a jerk. But he's a well-meaning jerk. That's a shame, Vice. We're fine. Yeah. She's doing the work of resting, so we have to go do the work of working. No. Cool. Oh my god, is that fast travel? Oh, we have a side quest in Seafront anyway. Okay. I don't actually remember if this is in the original. I think this is new. I don't remember fast travel being in the game. Actually, maybe it was. All right, have a good lurk, Charles. Oh, yeah, it's a Charles stream day. I almost forgot. God, why does that emote look like me? That's a good emote. That emote very much look like me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting that, like... So, in the original game, Vice would sometimes, like, rest on Nier's, like, hip. Um, but it doesn't seem like he does that anymore. It seems like he always just kind of floats around. And I wonder what the reason for that is. Oh, fuck. Actually, no, that's good. That gives me side quests to do off stream. That means I don't have to stop playing the game. Uh, do you have any new weapons? Nope. Um, So we're going to Seafront. Are we gonna be distracted on the way there? Because, like, the... Resident Evil is on the way there. But he does that in the original! No, we're not. Okay. Aww. Yona's so cute. I love Yona. Good child. Good child character. Okay. We have to go to this man's house. But first... Oh, he's right there. Alright. Let's go do a side quest real quick. That's fair. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's read it. Wait, what's this? Oh, yeah. My dearest beloved, again I put pen to paper when all I desire is to see you with my own eyes. How do the days find you? I am faring well enough. My illness is stubborn, but my love for you is stronger. Just knowing that you wait for me is enough to keep me going. I know how lonely you must be, but I must say this again. Do not attempt to find me. The voyage is treacherous and disease runs rampant in this land. If anything were to happen to you, I fear I would not be able to take it. My love, my dearest love, I will return to you soon. <coughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Man book. Book man. Bookman hook car door. <sighs> Whoa, hey, a side quest. Why do you think this child would be able to help? Hmm, that's fair. Does it? Yeah. What? Was that it? Okay. Was he literally just bragging about his girlfriend? That seems like that's all that was. I thought that was a side quest. What the fuck? Hey, old lady. I got mail for you. Hi. Be nice, Vice. Cool, thank you. All right. So I believe there will be another side quest for us at the post office now. I think. As like a continuation of this one. Either that or it happens later. I can't remember. Uh, map, let me see. Uh, no, I guess it happens a bit later. Okay. I guess we'll carry on. Hi. What's wrong, man? This is new. I don't remember this at all. My wife. Oh no. What a wife guy. It's fucking Ron. My god, he literally has like the voice that Mina did for Ron. <laughs> oh my god, it's Ron!
Okay. What does that mean? What do you mean it's your fault? I think he killed her. Yeah, I agree. He totally killed his wife. Um, hey. Maybe. Um... All right. Thank you. I'm a child, ma'am. All right. Cool, cool. Cool, but Sir? That man is instant transmissioning over there. Hi. Look at those JPEGs of fish. Look at those fucking JPEGs. Oh my god. You can literally see the compression on them. Holy shit. Is there like a first person? No. You can literally see- well, okay, I think those are, like, actual 3D fish right there. But, like, you can literally see the compression on the one there. That's great. I agree. Yeah. She's probably dead, right? There's no way she's alive, and I think her husband killed her. Though, why he would kill her and then have us investigate it, I don't know. Um. Did it? The X on the map was... In this direction, right? Huh. There's no X on the map, Hello. Why? Oh, that's a red bag? Ah! She turned into a shade. Something like that. Wife dead. Rip wife. Wait, the big shade isn't even here. What the hell? That's weird. Huh? How strange. Ah! Ah! Leave me alone! Got meat. Okay. Let's go back to the village.
I should have. I should. Oh no, the boar's there. That wouldn't have worked. The boar can't be in both places at once. Mm. I need more coffee. I'm feeling. S huh. For some reason, I thought those bottles on the wall were kind of leaning against the wall and not entering the village. Hey, man. Your wife's dead. No. Mm hmm. Why is it your fault? Why is it your fault? Sir, why is it your fault? No! Fuck this guy! What? Oh. What? Huh? Wait, she's alive? Also, she sounds like a bimbo. Oh. Okay. We thought you were dead. Yeah. It's literally just Ron. What? What a wife guy. What a wife guy. Wife gone. I miss wife. I agree, Vice. Let's leave. Suddenly remember that other important errand. No, let's stick around and listen. I'm interested, actually. Oh, here we go. Hey, guys. No. Uh-oh. I should have left. I should have left. I should have left. Um It's just an apple, like I don't, know if I don't give a shit. I'm siding with the girl. Oh no. Vice, can we leave, please? Hey, Vice. Hey, Vice, can we leave? Hey, Vice. Hey, Vice, can we leave? Oh, fuck. Shit. Oh no. Oh no. Both of them. They both suck. <sighs> Can we leave? Hey, hey, Vice? How long, how long are they gonna fight for? I'm not allowed to An hour?! Oh, goodness. Hmm...
Isn't he a con yeah. Yep. Is that why does her voice sound familiar? Is that Chie? Is that Aaron Fitzgerald? The like the like the cadence of her voice sounds like Aaron Fitzgerald. Is he gonna go do his job? Yep. Hey. Hey, dude. Oh, fuck. Do you have a black eye? No, you don't. Oh, thank God. Let's get the hell out of here. Hoi yo yo. No, that's fun. I I bet I would have been dragged into it like whether I left or not. Because we still had to talk to him, right? We had to we had to fit we had to we had to figure out the canal thing. So I I probably would have had to go through their argument either way. Hmm. Yeah. I think Rongle's right. That's accurate. <laughs> Wait, what are you implying, Vice? Are you implying that you two are a couple? What's up with that, bro? Hey, let's go talk to Popola. That's that's a really that's a really good bit of banter. I like it a lot. One day Vice went out to get milk and he never came back. Yeah, you could say that, I guess. You're welcome. Cool. Bye! Oh. Thanks, Popola. You're good. You're a good girl. Okay. Yeah, I think that wasn't in the original game. I don't remember it. At all. So I think that's a slight deviation to, uh... Establish fast travel. And now we go do the next plot thing. I think that's what that was. Also, original Nier did not have fast travel, so that's interesting. Though, actually, I guess Nier and uh, Rongle and Vice had a conversation about fast travel while we were uh, in the factory, right? And I think that was new, too, so maybe that's also establishing that. Hi, Yona!
Yeah. You have friends? That's not allowed. You're not allowed to have friends. Uh oh. Ah. Get used to advice. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I can't say no to her. We can't say no to Yona. We have to be nice to Yona. She's our sister. Also, like, she's cute, and we can't upset Yona. That would be very upsetting. No, she's got a friend that is a boy. Chill out, Rongle. Okay, let's take a break. I think we're going to need one after we did all of that uh, Forest of Myth stuff. So, I'll be back. I'm back. Oh, get out of here. No ramen. No free ramen. All right. Let's go to the Spencer Mansion. Oh, I have to move my... Hold on. I have to move my mic closer. There we go. Better. Now we go to the Spencer Mansion. We gotta go do a Resident Evil for a bit. H Hello, Zarboyle. Welcome back. Ah. Do you have new weapons or anything yet? Do you ever get new weapons? Hmm. <coughs> Zara boy, you missed story time. You missed me. You, you missed me telling stories. It is time to enter the world of survival horror. Oh, there's a lot of. Sh there's more shades out here than usual, huh? Pop. Whoa. Yeah. Ow, fuck, there's so many of them. I got Vari. Oh, I got a rare material. Rusty kitchen knife. And leather boots. Hell yeah. Get wrecked. Wait, Kaina, are you still fighting? Oh, Kaina's still fighting. My kill. Ah! Oh, Raven, you're gonna have a bad time. I don't remember if those are common enemies in this, uh, part. I forgot about them. I should have warned you, but I forgot. Uh, best words. Mahir? What does Mahir do? Item drop rate. Oh, yeah. And Vari does... Guard break? No, I don't want guard break. I want... Paha. Paha Mahir. 
Hey, look, there's a guy here. Hello, sir. Hmm. What about Kaine? Have you been have you been waiting for Kaine? I similarly forgot about the big spiders. I don't think they're a super common enemy though, so it's fine. It's fine. Look, it's literally Resident Evil. What mansion? Like it has the same layout and everything. It's literally got fixed camera angles. The music here is so good. Uh-huh. The Recknep's Mansion. Alright. Cool, dude. All right. Yeah, my yeah, my RE1 playthrough prepared me for this. Exactly. I'm ready for this shit. Where is is there's going to be an emblem on top of the fireplace? I like that it literally does like it comes just short of doing a door opening animation as we uh traverse the area. It's very cute. Very good. Cool. Cool painting. Cool painting. Why does that one not get a dedicated camera angle? Hmm. Why, Vice? Are you scared? Are you chicken? There's a keyhole marked moon here. Oh, we gotta get a moon key. Like I said. Literally Resident Evil. Keyhole marked darkness. Hello, darkness. My old friend. Alright. Gotta find keys. So I mentioned before that this game really loves doing, like... Exploring other genres. Um... <coughs> it's very fun. It's very fun and very good. I like it a lot. Huh. Where did Kaine go? Weird. It's okay, Vice. Don't worry about it. We got you. If anything comes at us, we'll just simply kill it. As I am accustomed to doing. Huh. So this is the other side of that. I will say navigating this mansion is a bit of a pain in the ass because it doesn't use tank controls. Um, is there... There's nothing there. Okay, let's go back to that door that Vice was too scared to go through earlier. I like how Vice does just automatically assume this place is haunted. It's very fun. Vice is a baby. What a wimp. Vice is cute. Oh? Where? Hello? Get you out of where? Hello? 
Hello? Pardon me? Who was this? Get you out of where? Oh. It sure has. It looked like a demon! Ah! Spooky scary! Well, this one. That one looks unchanged. That one still looks nice. I like that one. Oh! Oh. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, let's not look at those. Does someone have a bow? Weird. It's like they were fighting something. How odd. Hidden items tutorial. Ah. Moon key. Monkey! Why did they give me a tutorial for hidden items? Monkey. Hmm. I also like how you're walked into locked into just like doing a walking speed. Because it's really trying to emulate, uh, Resident Evil. You, there's literally not even a dodge. And that's also very fun. I believe this was the moon door. Yes. And so the shades in this case are Zambos. They're Zambambos. Zambopolis. That's a creepy hallway. Let's go through this door, shall we? Oh, a star key. Fuck. Oh! Ah! I'm gonna kill it quick. Very Resident Evil. Okay. Ah! Hello, character. Hey, it's a character. Who's this? Who is this? <laughs> huh, Emil, huh? It would be, wouldn't it? He has special eyes. He has special eye. Huh. Oh, that's great. Wait. Can I have the key, please? Thanks, bud. Thank you. Oh, it's a star key. What about the darkness key? He said that it can open any door in the manor, but there... was a darkness door. This is true. Kine does, in fact, 
kick ass. I don't know if it's about getting on his bad side. I think he just, like, trusts in her abilities, Rongle. Hello? 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 What was... Okay, wait, hold on. How do I look at the tutorial stuff? I want to look at the one for hidden items. Why do they give me that? Some acquired items may be hidden in the field. Search for sparkling points or brick wooden boxes to obtain the item inside. Oh, yeah, duh. Duh. Who's talking? Oh, hello. What? Huh? What do you mean? That's a person. Weird. Ah! Scary! Ah! Ow, fuck. Fuck you guys. Okay. Uh, is there anything actually in here? Nope! Just a lot of blood now. Uh-oh. You get out of here! You're not wanted! Alright, uh... Grimoire advice. Hold on. Weapons... Mahir. Didn't I get a better one? Mahes. Item drop rate. I mean, yeah, it's gonna smell like- it's gonna smell like blood later. Oh, hello. Light key? That's not... the dark key that I was hoping to find. Ow! Fuck. Not having a dodge is so weird! I don't like it, I'm used to having it. Sometimes I think being in a fantasy will be neat, but then I remember basically all of them are giant spiders. Yeah. Yeah, that would not be so Horror! Horror happen! We should we should make our own fantasy world without giant spiders and live in it. Oh, hello, butler. Wait, what? Um... What? Hello? What is going on here? Hello? Is he an automata? Huh. Creepy! Very creepy! Very creepy, sir, writing my child sister. Creepy! I think so.
Cut him out. <laughs> yeah. What kind of butler are you? Because he knows we can't say no. <laughs> Vice is always so pissed. He should expect this. Good point. What did happen to Kaine? Darkness Keep. It's okay. Are you following me? What the fuck? Is he following me now? Is he my friend? Okay, we have to, he is in fact my friend now. All right. That's fine. I like a meal. That's cool. Ah! Kind of stepped out for a smoke, yeah. Oh. Did you just insta-kill that enemy? Oh, okay. Emil's fucking powerful, dude. Wow. Okay. Emil fucking tough. Did that get worse? I feel like that got worse. Yeah, these are definitely getting worse. Hey, Emil, what's up with the fucking statues, bud? What's up with that part? What's up with that part of your little manor here? I mean, not the statues, the paintings. Also the statues, though. I have questions about the statues as well. Which are obviously people. Or were people. How long did it take you to realize that your eyes petrified people, bud? But obviously a while, huh? What's that? A sword! Blade of treachery. Whoa. Cool. That looked like a fucking Dragon Quest sword, bro. This looks like some shit the Luminary would have. Uh, camera angle. What's that? I can't save? Oh, there we go. Um, let's check out this door over here first. Actually, I do want to keep using Faith, because it does, it does do more damage, and it still has the good combo shit. Look at this Resident Evil ass room. Is there nothing in here? Huh. Alright. It's, uh. Oh. Hello. Uh huh. When does a big snack show? Uh, maybe soon. Maybe. I don't necessarily remember. But I wouldn't doubt that there was a big snack. Rad. Let's get out of here. Now we can go save.
Uh huh. Cool. Huh, that's weird. Strange. Huh. Odd. That's another book. Ow. Mm. Get fucked! You ain't shit! Book! Keep this in mind, Vice, okay? This is what happens if you get too gnarly. If you start being too mean, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you like this book. <laughs> All right. Ow, fuck. Get wrecked. Ow, fuck. Ah. Get wrecked! You're dead, bitch! Or... Not? What? Huh. Hi, Kaine. What's up? Huh. Where'd you come from? Where'd you go? Ow! Oh, I need a heal. <laughs> Help! Am I doing literally any damage? Shut up, Emil. I agree. Of course she's not. <laughs> Whoa. I do it. Wait, come on, what? Yeah. Shut up, Vice. Yes! Good at video game! Okay. So need to do a couple more attacks like that. Or maybe, can I just do it like these? Nope, I have to do that at least three, it seems. Okay. Whoa! No, I have to do more? Come on! There we go. Hell yeah. We buff. Fuck you, book. Huh. It popped. Huh. What's this?
What do you mean? Hmm. New sealed verse. <laughs> oh, his name is Sebastian. He does have a name. What a normal butler name. Why did they not show us? Oh, it's just showing us the fucking document. Video game. Come on. Come on, video game. Mm. Yep. <laughs> no, there's nothing traumatic happening here or anything. Thank you, Sebastian. Vice. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Vice. Shut up. Uh huh. About the person trapped in the mansion. Uh huh. Right. Uh huh. Correct. What about that? <laughs> like, you know those people asking for us to, like, uh, free them? And also, the, uh, p the paintings that, uh, that changed? What about all that stuff? Is that nothing? Don't worry about it? Okay. Alright. It's, it's alright. It's fine. What about the, what about the butler? What about what about the 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 figure of the butler that looked like a real butler? What about that? No, don't worry about it. Okay, sure. It's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So we now have to go find Grimoire Noir.
to complete our little collection. A collection of book. By the way, I believe the book that we just defeated is Grimoire Rubin? Something like that? That one's just a scrub. That's the that's a scrub book though. I'll be fine. It's okay. This is not going to be a big deal. You can't say that. You can't say that. Why would I? Money! Yeah. Correct. Gotta keep pushing on. Gotta find that book. Gotta find those emeralds. Hey, Popola. <laughs> Fuck. Where's that? Okay. How strange. I will definitely go get this thing, and everything will be fine. Nothing bad will happen. Near the southern gate. Okay, let's go. We have all the sealed verses. We just have to get the book, and then Yona will be safe and healthy and okay. Right? Hey, where'd the chickens go? Hmm. How weird. I got vapor moss! Uh-oh. Emil? What's up, bud? How's it going? Well, you seem fucked up. Uh, hey, bud. Y'all right? Hmm, what could possibly be happening? Hmm. Uh. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Gotta go do it. We gotta save the village. While the Jericho collapsed, 5,000 people believed dead. Request for reinforcements streaming in from multiple locations. We continue to monitor the situation. Damage report, February 6th, 2008. The wall of Jericho! Break the wall down! Huh. Uh oh. Everything will be okay forever. It's fine. Which gate was that? Is that this one? No. Hello? No, that was the southern gate, I guess. Oh no! That's the gate closest to the village! Devola! I don't know! Sure, I'll try. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, Jack. What's up? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hey, what's up? Uh, it's a large man. Oh! There's other shades here still. That's annoying. Stop blocking my attacks, you piece of shit. You're dead. Hold on. Vice, give me like a quick second, okay? Gotta kill this extra... Fuck! Really? Okay. Hey, attack me! Hey, idiot! Hey, idiot! Oh, I have to... Actually hit it with magic, huh? Oh my god. These guys just endlessly spawn, huh? Hey, idiot! Yeah, I know! Uh-oh. Bam-bam! Okay, come on. Come on! Do your thing! Bam, bam, bam. That didn't do any damage. Fuck me running. Can you guys stay dead? Nope, they can't. Oh, this is so annoying, actually. 
Oh, shit. What? Hello? Oh, no. I can't do anything about that. These guys are just here to drop health items for me, aren't they? I kind of wish they weren't here at all, because they're just incredibly annoying. Okay. Oh, no! Motherfucker! Yes! We do it. I'm good at video game. Hell yeah! There's some Bayonetta shit. Ha! Rip his arm off! Fuck yeah! Hell yeah! Oh shit! That's very bad. Um... Good one, Zarboil. Proud of you. That was a joke. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Vice. Okay. It's interior, huh? Whoa! Oh my god, there's so many enemies. Uh, ah! Ah! None of that hit. None of those attacks hit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Right in its fucking gob. You right. Uh, I can't hit that. I can't hit that? I literally cannot hit that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! What did that do for me exactly? Um. Oh, shit. We need to leave, we need to leave, we need to leave! Uh-oh. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. We are doing damage at least. Even if I do know how this works out. BAM! Get fucked! You ain't shit! Oh. You don't care, huh? Great.
It's almost like... We're not strong enough or something. Hey, Kaine. I love your laugh. What a badass. Yeah, we are. All right, our wife's here. Yeah. Yep. Does it matter, Vice? Yeah, I know, Vice. I am aware where it's headed. Fuck you. That did nothing. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Have I? I'm no, oh, yeah, this is that. Uh, this is excellent. This is perfect. Oh, God. That was almost perfect. Ow, fuck. Do I, have to, do I have to hit something else? No, it doesn't seem to change anything. Just die! Yes! Hello? Holy shit! Fuck yeah! Doing some sick anime shit. Oh, it doesn't care, huh? Huh. We gotta go all out. All out! More than that! We need more! We need bigger! Holy shit! Literally... A good, good drill break. Oh, it worked. It's fine. It all worked out. Look, it's totally dead. Everything's fine. It's all okay. We did it. We do it. Aren't we cool? We're the coolest. We're the coolest and the strongest and the buffest. Oh. Huh. Huh. Weird. Hey, Emil. How's it going, bud? Emil kicks ass. Emil's a good boy. <laughs> Emil, don't swear, please, okay? <laughs> I love that so much. I love Emil swearing. Let Emil say fuck. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Huh. 
Hey, you're still you're still alive, huh? Hmm. Huh? What? Huh? Uh oh. Oof. Gotta not gonna be allowed his power. His power is too convenient for this specific situation. We need to get him out of the narrative for just a split second. We have to use his power to justify there being a fight here. You know, get out, get it out of, get it out of there. It's like the Flash, you know. Or like uh, Deanna Troy, in TNG. Their powers would solve so many problems, so we have to write them out somehow. Uh, whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey, whoa. Spicy. God, just lock on to that one thing, please. Thank you. Get wrecked. What now? Good idea. Ow! Bam! That didn't do it? Come on! Come on, man! Stop! Stop! Slow down. There we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh! Shit! Okay. Ow! Fuck! What an asshole! Ow! Stop it! It's so annoying! Oh, it takes so long. Ow! Ow! <laughs> there we go. We do it. Let's get anime as fuck. Give it a punch. Um. Get wrecked. Um. Huh. Hello? Huh. Hmm. Weird. Oh. Uh oh. Ah. Huh. Ha. Huh. Weird.
And then they died. Game over. Oh, I froze. Why did I freeze? Hello? I am thou. Thou art I. Did my phone fucking die or something? Hello? Oh, I think my phone literally died. Hello? No, it's still on. What the fuck? Weird. Hmm. Huh. They're gonna combine! There we go, I'm back. Hmm. Weird. Uh-oh. Tripod, can you cooperate? Thank you. Why does this book sound familiar? There it is! Start fucking helping us! Oh, it's DC Douglas? That makes sense. So that, that little Kaine, uh, speech used to be literally at the start of the game. Before you even hit start, the opening cinematic opened with Kaine saying that. Okay, guy we met five minutes ago. Okay, guy, we met five minutes ago. <laughs> the memories of his friends bring him back. Fuck you, bro. Did it actually retain the sword that I was using? Oh my god, it did. Wow. Cool. My sword's in the cutscene.
It didn't work, idiot. Are you sure? <laughs> I love her laughing. You do. <laughs> Vice is so fucking good. What a good boy. Best boy. All right. All your magical powers have been taken away. Wait, do I not have my- hold on. Wait, where are my combos? Okay, we, we do it. Got it. Uh, medicinal- oh, there's more. I'll salve, ow. Fuck you- shit. Okay. Where are you? God damn it, there's so many. How do I do that one? Oh, I'm just doing it easy now. Oh, okay, I see. I got it. Yeah! Are we getting stronger as the fight continues? I think we're dispatching these shades easier. No. Get used to it, bitch! Yes. Ah. Oh, this is so fucking good. Ow, fuck. Uh, and to get in there. Ow, fuck. Ow, fuck. Fuck all the way off. Oh, okay, I forgot that I can do that and just, like, just destroy the things that are making bullets happen. Get wrecked, idiot! Who the fuck do you think you are? Wait, that's not the right power! Fuck, shit, fuck. Shit, fuck. Uh-oh. Oh, shit! Ow! He must. Fuck it up. Ah, shit. Oh, come on.
Oh, sh no, 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 no. Whew. We do it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh shit. Oh fuck. We won! <laughs> I think, yeah, I think Rungle needs a doctor, too. That probably didn't feel very good. Hmm. It's almost like he's saying some plot shit there or something. No, he just needs to pop a medicinal herb. He's fine. So, uh... About that giant shade behind us, though? No! Very much not okay. Yes, it's a lot of it. I agree. She's also got some fart gas happening right now, so it's probably best that we do this quick. Shit sucks, bro. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I forgot that they give you a choice here. <laughs> I forgot that that happens. This cutscene is better animated than the rest of them. These aren't in engine. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the game. We beat it. We win. Yay. Well, shit sucks. Shit's bad right now. Save my progress up to this point? Yes, please. All right. 
A successful test case has been discovered and detained. The specimen's cooperation has been requested according to the predetermined stipulations. Treatment of the specimen will continue on a classified basis until we determine why our results have such a wide range of variation. Hmm. What? That's a weird thing for Yona to write. Five years later. There's a time jump. By the way, there's a time jump. This is, uh, near Shippuden now. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck, they have armor now. They've advanced. What up, bitch? Rongo's cool now. Rongle kicks ass now. And he can use more than just a single-handed sword. Ah. Bam. Two-handed swords kind of suck to use, though. Uh, did it do a button? Kusanagi transients. Spears are the spears are the obvious like best weapon in the game. They are like they are like the obvious choice. Uh oh yeah right I have magic. I forgot. I have magics. Yeah, exactly. Rongle can now use weapons that he was too small to use as a teenager. He can also now reasonably be shipped with Kaine. <laughs> Even though she's my wife. Let's not let's not get it twisted, all right? Uh, let's see. Now this is more damage. Whoa, cool. Yo, that kicked ass. Fuck yeah. Eat my shit, asshole. Oh, that's that cool spin attack. That that rules. That rules actually. There's no co there's no competitions, our boy. She's my wife. This is just this is just facts. Oh, Wait, I think I like I think I like two-handed swords. Hold on. I think they actually rule. Oh my god, that's like a fucking That's actually like an actual uppercut attack. Hold on. Fuck yeah. His voice is deeper. Oh my god, his voice! I think it- yeah, I think it- well, you know what, we can check. I think that- I think that might in fact be Kime's sword. So what's the deal now? His voice is so deep now. Oh no, he's hot. <laughs> hmm.
All right. Um, let us look at our weapon story real quick. Let's look at the sword that we have. The shield left hanging on the wall was covered in dust. The blade left in the scabbard had rusted over. The techniques I hadn't used were forgotten. The body I was to train was left to grow soft. I had lost the will to practice discipline. Uh, hard to tell. But I think it is, I think it is Kaim's weapon. I think so. But I mean, it's also, you know... I wonder... Is Guts' sword actually in this game? It's gotta be, right? If they gave us two-handed swords, it's gotta be. Um, alright. Hey. That's the stream for the day. Um, oh no! I'm not doing that yet. Um, so... I might be back tomorrow. I think we don't, might do this more tomorrow. Because I learned... I learned on Thursday. We gotta do a lot of this game to, um... Properly finish it. So we're gonna have to play through... The second half of the game. Four times, including this time. And then after the fourth time... We have to play through the entirety of the game a second time. On a new save. Not even a new game plus. So we don't even have our, like... Save or anything. We don't have any cool powers. We don't have any new game plus stuff. So that'll be fun. I'm gonna need to stream this game a lot for us to get through it in a moderately timely manner. So we're gonna be streaming it a lot. Um yeah, so I'll be back tomorrow. We'll do more of this tomorrow. Um yeah. I love you all. I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night. And as always. Good sleep.